Game two, here from the campus of Macomb Community College, it's your Monarchs and the Henry Ford the College Hawks. Three, we had a thriller in game one. Tom Cavanaugh here through both games. 3-2 is your final in the first one. Walk-off swing from Ali Praznak, dropped one down the right field line with runners on first and second and nobody out. Took a second for Henry Ford to realize it, but that game was over in a second as soon as the runner Murray came around to score. She was in a pinch game hit position. Pitch for 59 p.m. Game time temperature 64 degrees. Just getting started before five o'clock here in game two. It's a big one for McComb. They moved up into to nine and three in conference play. Here's a ground ball from Ella Noak to third base, botched by Bayer, and it's going to be likely an infield hit there from Noak, but. going to clarify it is going to be an infield hit. So Noak reaches to start Ellen Noak, that is. She's in right field for both games. Kylie Douglas now. Facing Caitlin Frazier. Frazier is 6.32 ERA this season. Allowed three home runs, has struck out 12 and walked 29 in 34 in a third innings pitched. A strike on the outside corner, nice pitch. Umpires have switched up, it's Al Diver behind the dish. And in the field, Robert Hinojosa. Douglas is doing the catching in both games today. The same as Casey Stang who's behind the dish. You got Byer at third base, Prasnax at short. Thomas over at second base, Bill Poe at first. Out left, Katie Thomas, or check that out, right field is Carolyn Martin. In center field, Savannah Clark, and in left, Zoe Hunt. The only changes really are Stang is batting a little bit higher in the order. And Caroline Martin, Stang, throw down. That's, this one's going to get into center field past the glove of Prasnak. Stang had to throw across her body as she reached to her right, had to throw to her left, and that's what sent the ball up the line and right into center. One ball, two strikes to Douglas. Successful steal for Noak. She's at second. Frazier's 1-2 is in the dirt, blocked by Stang. Almost snuck past her there, 2-2. Just five total hits in the game earlier for McComb in the 3-2 walk-off win. And Grace Joukowsky was really your star, nine strikeouts through seven innings. We're gonna go to a full count on Douglas. That fastball missed a little bit too high.
Ground ball on to second base. Off the heel of the glove of Thomas, coming around third and trying to score. The throw, up the line, not in time. Douglas puts one on the ground to second. It's an error for Thomas. And just like that, one nothing, Hawks on top. So back-to-back -to -back botch balls at third and second here in the inning have led to a run. Jessica Hazel is your pitcher on the Henry Ford side. She gave up the walk-off swing. She also struck out three in one inning on nine pitches. Bella Lekitsky now with nobody out. Cut and a miss at a fastball in the outside corner. Right now, McComb kind of handcuffed at the pitching position. With Allison Vogt being hurt, it's Joukowsky and Frazier really. I mean, Haley Mitchell can get in there as well, but her and Prasnak, not your regular pitchers and have had problems finding the zone. Want to see how long you can ride with Caitlin Frazier right now. She leaves one inside, two and one. She's getting ground balls, but a lot of hard contact early on through the first couple hitters. Kitsky waiting, this one's on the ground. Back to the mound, they're gonna try to double up. Prasnak touches the bag, the throw to first is not close. So with the fielder's choice, Lekitsky reaches, but they get the lead runner, Douglas. Nice play from Frazier on the mound. Brings up Jada Oliver. Played second and first. Last game, she's the designated player here in game two. Frazier working left side of the rubber there. She gets a high pop up out of play, 0-1. Fastball misses just a bit high and outside, 1-1 to Oliver. She had an 0 for 3 day in game one. One ground out and a couple of fly outs. Joukowsky really just induced a lot of weak contact in the air and a lot of swing and misses as well. There's one on an off-speed pitch in her half. Might have gotten a piece of it, says home plate umpire Al Diver. You know, talking before the contest with Macomb Athletic Director Brian Rizzo, he said that Al Diver, our home plate umpire, just wait for game two. He's going to have his own rubber band system on his hands for how he addresses balls and strikes and keeps it in his own mind. This ball's low, makes it two and two with one out. You know, most people have that clicker where you just spin the numbers to uh, no balls and strikes, outs and innings. But Al's got a couple rubber bands, not multicolored, they're the regular normal colored brownish rubber bands, and he's got them across his ring and pinky finger and entire hand. Oliver skies one out to left field. Coming in is Hunt, she makes the catch. Two outs now after the fielder's choice and a fly out from Oliver. The better 40, Millie Garcia. Millie Garcia with one on and two out. No score, top of the first inning. McComb and Henry Ford from game two of our doubleheader. 3 2 walk off fashion W for McComb in game one, improves their record to 13 and 9 and 9 and 3 in conference play. Another win, and it starts to creep in on the heels of the Mott Bears in first place at 11 and one in conference. Garcia, pair of strikeouts and a walk in game one. Here's a chopper back to the mound. Frazier, nice glove play, tosses on to Bilpo. Henry Ford is able to grab a run after the error. McCombs got a little bit of work to do, looking for an offensive explosion here in game two. We go to the bottom of the first inning, one nothing, Henry Ford on top of McComb. Here from the McComb Athletic Network.
First crack at it here in game two for the Monarchs. They trail by one after a couple of booted balls in the first Number inning. Very seven. rare mistakes that you see from this Macomb team. Usually very clean in the field all the way around. Savannah Clark's gonna send the first pitch out to left field for a single. She might take second, she will. Sneaking it by the left fielder, Goodman, who lackadaisically played it out there and left. Just watch it go under her, her, her foot there, her, her glove. And Savannah Clark's able to speed up and get the second base. The batter, 22, Ellie I don't think Goodman was, was expecting the type of spin that ball had as well. It hit the ground and just spun out towards the left side. Ellie Prasnak now. Prasnak had the walk-off swing in game one to win at three to two. A little blooper down the left field line, or right field line, I should say. Ellen Noak gave chase and couldn't make the catch, and that's how the game ended. With the runner at second base there, it was definitely gonna score a run. Prasnak, five homers on the year, second in RBIs, takes a strike on the outside corner, 2-1. Gonna pull one foul, evening the count at 2-2. Defensively for Henry Ford, it's Kylie Douglas behind the plate again. Jalen Reyes back at third. Bella Lakitsky at shortstop. Josie Niehoff, she's in the game here in game two, playing second. Kaelin Postuma moves from pitching to playing first. Goodman's in left, Garcia is in center, and Noak in right. Off-speed pitch, swing and a miss from Prajnak, and she was headed back to the dugout before uh, that ball was completed for an out. So Prasnak strikes out, and there's one gone with the runner at third base. The batter, 24, Bryn Fire. And if you're Prasnak there, you kind of have to, you have to run to first base because that draws a throw from the catcher Douglas, and you never know what could happen with the runner at third base there. So mental mistake from Allie. She's got to run down to first uh, on that drop third strike. 0-1 oh, to Bryn Byer. Make it 0-2. Hazel puts one on the outside corner. And we know how serious she can be on the mound after striking out three in one inning. O2 to Brin. Upper outer corner. Now Diver behind the plate says no. Tying run, 60 feet away at third base. Byer, swing and a miss. Two gone, fastball at the eyes. The it's a tough pitch to catch up to. It's definitely a strike. It was more towards the letters than the eyes, I should say. But regardless, it's out number two. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Hazel. She's got five now through her inning in a third, inning in two thirds. She was the losing pitcher. And she gave up that walk off, moving to one and eight on the year. Bill Poe, huge swing and a miss there. She's down 0 2. Lefty on lefty matchup here. Hazel gets her sign. Inside corner, just off the plate. Good pitch. Here's the one, two. Off speed again. Fouling it away and staying alive is Bill Poe. It's always tough to help keep that bat through the zone as long as possible just to get a piece. And Hazel's doing a really nice job of mixing up her pitches and sequencing the fastballs and the off speed. Another foul ball from Bill Poe. One, two, it stays. It's your regular infield for McComb with Bill Poe at first, Thomas at second, Prasnak at short, and Byer at third. Bill Poe lines one out to left field, coming in. It's Goodman. It's going to drop in front of her for a single. RBI base hit for Bill Poe, and it's tied up 1 1. With two outs, no, Ashley Goodman has got to lay out for that ball. 
if the, if the ball falls in front of her, the run scores regardless. If she dives and the ball gets behind her, the run still scores. Bilpo might have been on second base with it, but it's better than allowing the run and diving for that play out there. One ball and no strikes to Katie Thomas. Thomas swing and a miss, fastball. Here the letters inside half. One one is in the dirt. Good stop from Douglas as it bounces off the plate. Ball game is tied after Carly Bilpo's single out to left field. Thomas. Awaits that pitch just a bit low below the knees. Three and one. Hazel delivers. Make it three and two. Hazel's able to push to full, getting a foul ball from Thomas. Three and two still. Three, two, two outs, runner on. Tie ball game, one, one. Thomas, another foul ball. Team hitters from both sides doing a nice job of extending at bats, making the opposing pitcher throw a lot of pitches. Three, two again. High pop up on the infield. Having trouble with it. Niehoff coming in and not able to make the catch as Ellen Noak. Miscommunication between Niehoff and Noak, the right fielder and second baseman. And now Noak, she dives right onto the turf. She's going to need a second. She's an outfielder, so she's not used to diving on the dirt. Sydney Used to those grass stains more than the dirt stains, but she's going to, her and Garcia are going to go out there and right. And they're gonna have to take a look at her. So on to third base goes Bilpo. She went first to third on that blooper. And Thomas, she has a hit. So first and third with two outs. And those plays are not as routine as you would think. Those in-between pop-ups between the infield and the outfield. It's a long run for your outfielders to come on in, but it's also tough for those outfielders to scale back and try to make a play, especially when it's sunny. Sydney Urban now, line drive in the left center field gap. One hops the fence. One run will score, it's Bill Poe. Thomas, she's gonna be waved around third. The throw, not in time. Urban's on to second base and it's a two run single for Urban and she takes second base on the throw. Urban probably had a double regardless, but hung out at first base there to make sure that the throw was not down to second. I just think she hit it far enough to be able to take two. So a base hit to score two. Three, one is your score. McComb has the lead. Stang, swing and a miss. Three straight singles. Bilpo, Thomas, and now Urban to drive in a pair. Stang checks her swing, wisely leaves that one up near the chin. Jess Hazel delivers a 1-1 in the dirt. Urban had that solo home run, her seventh of the year back in game one. Now she delivers a pair more RBIs. Swing and a miss from Stang, makes it 2-2 with two outs. Three, one, we're in the first inning, Stang, bloops one out to right field, over the head of Niehoff, and it's gonna get past Noak, the right fielder. Stang to second base. She almost got underneath the tag, the run scores in Urban. 4-1, Casey Stang is thrown out, but she drives in a run. Monarchs lead it 4-1 after one inning of play. 
Henry Ford due up in the top of the second. This is your home for Macomb Community College Athletics. Leading off for the Hawks, number two, Josie Neal. Back here in the top of the second inning, five total runs in the opening frame. Four for McComb, they lead it. And here's a line drive in the right center gap for Josie Niehoff. She's gonna cruise into second base with a double. First pitch of the inning and Henry Ford comes out swinging. The better 44, Caitlin Posh. Opposite field line drive. Nice swing from Niehoff. She's getting, she just got her first at bat of the day, did not play in game one. We were just about to get into her stats. That was her second double of the year. Caitlin Postuman now. No batting gloves, waits in the right handed box. Pop up out of play back towards the stands, 0 1. Fastball high and outside for a ball. 1-1 one, one to Postuma. She pitched for six total innings. Checked at five total innings in game one. It was Jess Hazel who came in for the sixth and seventh. There's a strike that misses off the plate outside for a ball, two and one. Down at second base, Josie Niehoff. She just doubled to lead things off. Hawks trail four to one. They're looking to have a little bit of vengeance here in game two after tying the game up late. It was 2-0 McComb all the way through that one. And then an error out in left field made it 2-2, two two, tying the game up. McComb was able to steal it in the bottom of the seventh inning. Frazier delivers a fastball on 3-1, pushing the count to full. Nice pitch. Postuma 0 for 2 with a walk. That was back in the first game today. Ground ball, base hit in the left field. Zoe Hunt got to keep it in front. She does. And over at third is going to be Niehoff. We've seen a couple balls for each side kind of play off some hops out there in the outfield. It's not a completely flat outfield out there. I mean, it never is. I remember in college I played at Hops Field. That wasn't the actual name. That's just how the outfield was. And a lot of times you have to use your body to keep the ball in front. So it's first and third with nobody out right now. A couple of nice swings from the lower half of this lineup. Niehoff with a double, and then you had Postuma with a single, and now there's runners on the corners. Jalen Reyes, she'll dig in now. 1-0 count on her, Frazier delivers off the plate and high, 2-0. and oh. Reyes 0 for 3 in game one. Struck out, popped out twice. Strike.
strike called on the inside corner. Good pitch from Caitlin right there. The key in a lot of these at-bats is just being able to battle. Get to one or two strikes. The 2-0, 3-0 counts. Tough to battle back from, but McCombs able to do it. Game in, game out, as we're at 2-2 now. Reyes lines it back. Top of the second inning here from game two on a beautiful Wednesday. 64 degrees here in Warren, Michigan. In the left-handed box on the 2-2. We're going to push the full once again. Krasnack at shortstop. She's backing up now. She was even with the baseline. Might have been able to check the runner at third. You never know with something hard on the ground. 3-2 is down low for ball four. And the Hawks have them loaded here in the second inning. The batter, 21, Ashley Goodman. Nobody out still for Ashley Goodman at the dish. Strike called. Lower outer corner to Goodman on the first pitch from Frazier. Monarchs lead it four to one. They gave up one in the top of the first, came back with four in the bottom half. And now Henry Ford threatening with nobody out, the bases loaded, and a 1-1 one -one count to the nine batter, Ashley Goodman. Stang tries to frame it on the upper outer corner, not gonna get the call, it's two and one. And now head coach of Macomb, Jim Beard, out to the mound to have a conversation with his pitcher and the infield. Something you never really see from this Macomb team is bases loaded, nobody out. Back in game one, there was the only other, I guess, similar situation was two on with nobody out, and Joukowsky then retired the next three in order. So as the conversation concludes, all infielders head back to their bases. And it's a situation where the infield probably is getting some sort of instruction on where to go with this ball, if it being on the ground. Obviously, fly ball in the air is going to get a run to score from third on a sacrifice fly. But something hard on the ground here to either Praznak or Thomas up the middle is going to be the question. Here's a pop-up. Left side, Byers able to make the catch as it's an infield fly. One out. The better three, Ella Noke. Goodman pops out, and it's going to go back to Ella Noke at the top of the lineup. She singled to start the ball game. It was that hard chopper to third base that bounced off of Bryn Byer. There's a strike call on the first pitch. Ella's going to line one fouled on the third baseline. Quickly 0-2. Great spot right now for Frazier in this Monarch defense. It's Niehoff at third. She led off the inning with a double. Postuma singled. She's at second. Reyes was just walked. She's over at first base. Here's the 0-2. Way off the plate outside. Looking to get no, so yeah, Noak to chase there. Krasnack a few steps back, now creeps in at shortstop. Frazier delivers the one-two. Line drive again, foul, just past the leaping glove of Bayer. She gets a ton of action down there at third base, and it's not just all in fair play. There's some, I guess, flared balls down that third base side over near uh, the third base coach's box that are definitely playable and catchable. You can see Zoe Hunt now. She's playing almost a third infield position in very shallow left field, waiting for that little drop flare shot. The one, two. Ground ball again, foul. Hey, 
and Noak is only going to that left side right now. So if you'd be able to completely shift over, you take Thomas and you put her in the normal shortstop position where Prasnak would be. I don't see her going to the right side. The one, two, high above the head. One at bat from Ellen Oak right now, two and two. Scraped up that right forearm as she dove in from right field to make a play last half inning. Looks to be just fine. She's battling here. Swing and a miss. Frazier, her first and the biggest strikeout. Two outs now with the bases loaded. Number 12, Kylie Douglas. Upper outer corner, that was a strike and Noak had to go after it. Kylie Douglas now, scored the only run on an error. Bounced one on to second base that got off the heel of Thomas's glove. Oh one one in the air, foul ground, staying, coming over. She's gonna run out of room, it's a foul ball out of play. 0-2 to Douglas. She had the swing to tie things up in game one. When it was 2-0, she lined one out to left field that got past Zoe Hunt and brought in two runs. There's a line drive on one hop down the first baseline, just foul. 0-2 on Douglas, it'll stay. Arguably the best hitter in this lineup right now. 23 total hits, leads the team. Also 12 RBIs leads in that category as well. Very impressive too, just one strikeout at 60 at bats. The 2-2 two -two in the dirt. She puts the ball in play almost every time. Looking at this, two walks and one strikeout in 60 plate appearances. Frazier gets her sign, now she leans in. The one, two with two outs. Strike three! Second strikeout of the year for Kylie Douglas and make it two now for Kaitlyn Frazier. Bases loaded, nobody out, and the Monarchs get out of the jam. We go bottom two, four, one. Macomb on top. This is your home for Macomb Community College Athletics. Leading off for the Monarchs, number six, Zoe Hunt. It's a 4-1 lead for McComb here at home in game two. 8-9-10 batter starting with Zoe Hunt as she drops a bunt down the left third baseline. On to first and Hunt is safe. Beautiful bunt on the first pitch from Zoe and she's aboard using her speed to get down there, and what a spot to throw that bunt down. In between the corner and third, and your pitcher on the mound, Jess Hazel. Caroline Martin now. Squats in that left-handed box and takes a strike at the knees. Martin did not play in game one. She's out in right field today for game two. Swing and a miss, down 0-2. Martin just seven at bats all year long. She fights away, 0-2 still. She's drawn a few walks in that span. Looking 
for a first hit. The 0-2, swing and a miss. That cutting fastball down and away to a left, the very tough pitch to hit. It just runs out of room, missing the bat. Now batting for the Monarchs, number eight, Savannah Clark. One out with one on for the leadoff batter, Savannah Clark. Base hit last time, and she puts the first pitch foul left side. A little bit of separation between the two hands for Clark. And that pitch is much too high, sailing over the head of Savannah. A lot of times those off-speed pitches will just get too much air underneath them and will not be attractive strikes for home plate umpire Al Diver. Two and one. High pop up from Clark. Middle of the infield coming over is Lakitsky and she makes the catch on the run. So after a leadoff bunt single for Zoe Hunt, a strikeout and a pop out have two gone. The batter, number 22, Allie Prasnak. Two way for Allie Prasnak. She struck out swinging. That was her second of the day total. She was the hero in game one. Takes a strike at the knees, getting her second at bat in as many innings. Krasnack back towards the Henry Ford dugout. She is in a hole once again, 0 and 2. One of the best defenders and hitters in the entire Eastern Conference of the MCCAA. Wags that bat and bounces it on the left shoulder. Zoe Hunt going to take off for a second on a steal attempt, and she's out. Kylie Douglas has a heck of an arm. She's already thrown out two in the doubleheader today, the first here in the second one. Hunt is cut down for out number three. A leadoff base runner is stranded. We go to the top of the third inning. 4-1 lead for your Macomb Monarchs. Third in inning of work for Caitlin Frazier on the mound for your Monarchs. Bella Lakitsky will start things off along with Jada Oliver and Millie Garcia. First pitch is high and outside. I want to take a second here in the third inning. Sponsored by First State Bank. A community bank with nationwide ATMs and locations throughout Macomb County, Michigan. Offering consumer and business banking since 1917. Call and search up First State, State Bank now. Fly ball to right left center field and it's off the wall. Lakitsky's gonna sit in at second base. Another leadoff double, the second straight leadoff double here for the Hawks. Now betting for the Hawks, 34, Jada Oliver. It was Josie Niehoff last inning and now Lakitsky hits it off the wall in the left center gap. It'll be Jada Oliver's turn now. Monarchs were able to get out of the second inning unscathed. They put the bases loaded. Oliver now lines one. One hop in the wall in left center field. Lakitsky's going to come around and score easy. And in the second is Jada Oliver. Back to back doubles have made this a four to two ball game. Boy, 
and those were lasers. Lakitsky kind of put a little more underneath it, had a chance to get out of here with a little more, I guess, wind blowing out there. But Oliver, that was a laser beam. Millie Garcia takes a first pitch low. She grounded back to the mound to end the first inning. These Henry Ford hitters, we've seen it in the past. They got the swings to score a lot of runs. And here's another shot to the right center gap. Martin, a long run. This one's off the wall. Oliver is going to come in and score. Three straight doubles for the Hawks right now. Millie Garcia drives in a run, and it's now four to three. Time is called as Casey Stang is out to the mound to talk with Frazier. So the first two in the left center gap, and now Millie Garcia goes the opposite way off the wall. Four runs on six hits with two errors right now for McComb. Three runs, five hits, and one error for Henry Ford here on the road. McComb was able now to win game one Josie on a walk-off base hit down the right field line. And Henry Ford looking to, I guess, steal one here on the road as they're 2-16 and 16 all time on the year. They're 2-11 and 11 in conference. And these are games that McComb absolutely needs to win. Here's a pop-up out of play right back towards us. Talked about the ability to sweep a double header, whether it's at home or on the road. They've struggled with that the last couple of times. Early in the year, they were sweeping teams left and right for double headers. Bolstering that conference record. There's a strike on the outside corner, making it 0-2. Teams like Mott and Schoolcraft have given them issues, and those are the better teams along with uh, McComb. Here's a line drive to right field. This is going to get into the outfield. A base hit for Niehoff. Holding up at third base is going to be Garcia. Four straight hits for Henry Ford here in the third inning. On fire is this entire lineup, three through six right now. No benefit, Hawks. 44, Caitlin Postman. Caitlin Postuma has runners on the corners still with nobody out. Tying run is at third. Go ahead is over at first base. Loud swings all inning and all day here in game two for the Hawks. Strike one called on the inside corner. Postuma singled into left field her last time. It was a hard ground ball between short and third. Swing and a miss. They're going to back pick at third base, and it's going to hit the runner at third in Millie Garcia. If that doesn't hit her, it's in the left field. Byer was on the near side, fair ball side of the bag. That throw is headed to the foul ball side. No balls and two strikes on Postuma, looking for the very first out of the inning. Throw down to second. Caught by Prasnak at the last second. Coming in to score is Garcia. They try to get the runner steal in second. They can't, and scoring on the throw is Millie. 4-4, four, four, tie ball game now. Henry Ford has scored three runs in the first four batters of the inning. Still nobody out. Four straight hits. It was three straight doubles. Postum is holding a 1-2 count. That last pitch looked really good as well. Down and away, makes it 2-2. Frazier looking for a big strikeout. High and outside. Three balls and two strikes. Full count. Tapped on the ground. Postuma stays alive in that right handed box. Kitsky doubled, Oliver doubled, Garcia doubled. Niehoff singled, and now it's Caitlin Postuma at the dish with a full count.
Ground ball to third base on the 3-2, Byer. She's gonna air mail the throw to first. It's down the line. Coming around third, Niehoff. She's gonna try to score. The throw to second base, Postuma was already there. Henry Ford with their very first lead of the afternoon. Throwing error on Bayer, and this inning has really tumbled out of control here for the Monarchs. Postuma, as we said, down to second base. It's Jalen Reyes' turn. Where else do you go if your head coach Jim Beard on the mound right now? Here's a bunt. It hits off of Reyes. It's going to be called a foul ball. These Hawk hitters are really just timing up Caitlin Frazier well. She has not walked many, just one walk so far on her day. But she's already allowed six hits. And they are not soft ones at that. Here's a ball high, one and one. Five, four is your score. Henry Ford is on top. They've scored four in this inning. Here's a foul ball from Reyes. One ball, two strikes. Reyes, a 250 hitter this year. 10 for her first 40. Three doubles as well, so a little bit of pop can split a gap. Swing and a miss. Fastball outside corner. Reyes goes down on strikes for out number one. Needed that first out. Once you get that first one, it's just a monkey off the back, and you can continue on. There's still a runner down at second base in Caitlin Postuma. Goodman will take a first pitch ball outside. He popped out to third base with the bases loaded last inning. Hawks have done a much better job of scoring those runs than they did last. They've already left five base runners to the first two innings on. Here's a bunt attempt just out of the reach of the catcher Stang as it hangs up in the air. One and one to Goodman with one out. Trying to get that runner Postuma over to third base. There's a strike on the lower outside corner. Nice spot from Frazier. Puts her ahead in the count, one and two. Outfield fairly deep beside Zoe Hunt in left field. She's in for the slap swing the other way. The one, two. Line drive to third, caught by Byer in foul ground. Nice catch from Bryn over there, ranging to her right. And that's two away. Ellen Oak is 0 for 2, an error, reached on an error and scored and struck out once. She's going to look to bunt. Pulls the bat back, and that's a ball. Noak is the eighth batter of this inning. Monarch's got to stop the bleeding right here. They only trail by one run. Noak's going to look to bunt again. This time it's a strike. Noak's going to line one out of play. Frazier, a couple strikeouts today. She recorded strikeouts one and two to end the second inning, grabbing the last two outs there. Check that, she's got three. Let off this inning with a strikeout to Reyes. Strike three on the outside corner. Noak doesn't like the call, and it's strikeout number four for Frazier. A four-run third inning with three straight doubles for the Hawks have given them the lead. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Macomb looking to score a few more. This is your home for Macomb Community College Athletics. You're watching Macomb Softball.
leading off for the Monarchs, 22, Ellie Fresnan. Third chance at the dish here in game two for McComb. They're going to face Jess Hazel once again, and the first pitch is a strike to Ellie Prasnak. Prasnak struck out swinging her first time. As we talked about, had that game-winning walk-off swing last game, and now she lines one out to left field. This one's got a little bit of carry, and it's going to get over the head of Ashley Goodman. In the second base is Prasnak, and she's got herself a double. Looked like it had a chance to get out of here, but the wind blowing the complete opposite way out towards right field. And Goodman, she was frozen for a second. Didn't realize it was going to get over her head. Prasnak's in there. A lot of extra base hits here in this third inning. Three from Henry Ford and now one on the McComb side. Fire, skies one in the air. Not sure if there's any room. Nope, right behind our press box here. The McComb softball field. Byer is down 0-1. Oh, there's a ball down and outside. One and one to Byer. She struck out swinging as well her first time up. Jess Hazel really had her way. Their first couple of hitters and then Bill Poe Thomas and Urban really started to get things going in that first. Bayer puts it on the ground, a second, it's past the glove of Niehoff into right center field. Prasnak's gonna come around and score. Tie ball game once again, it's 5-5. Base hit for Bayer is, it was a tough backhand play for Niehoff and she just didn't get her glove in the dirt. Carly Bilpo's turn. She had an RBI single her first time. Part of a four-run first inning. Henry Ford just returned the favor with four in the third. First pitch is out of play. Bilpo's got a runner at first, and Bren Beyer going to leave an offbeat pitch high and outside. Definitely a different look, an unconventional look for lefties. They're used to seeing right-handed pitchers. It's not too often you'll see a lefty on the mound. Just out of the hand a little bit differently, and it's coming for, from her near side rather than the opposite side than what she's used to seeing as a lefty. One and two now as she puts that one out, out of play. Choking up on the one, two. Fly ball out to left field. This ball's got a little bit of tail. It could drop fair, and it's caught by Goodman. Ranging into foul ground, Ashley Goodman makes the catch for out number one. That ball is just a few feet away from the warning track out there in left field. Still gave it a ride. Did Bill Poe just a little underneath it. Katie Thomas, a base hit last time, came around to score. Part of that big four run first. Thomas now sends one out to center field. This one's got a chance. Looking up is Garcia and that's gone. Two run shot for Katie Thomas defending her player of the week last week in the MCCAA East. It's now 7-5 McComb. Dead center field, she got all of that one. And that's how you respond after giving up four runs in an inning. You saw three straight doubles, four straight knocks for the Henry Ford side, and McComb said, enough of that. We're going to do it ourselves. Double from Prasnak, RBI single from Byer, and now Thomas goes deep. Conversation on the mound right now. Assistant coach Mike Laboud out there to talk with his infield and Hazel on the mound. Second homer of the year for Katie Thomas. Those were RBIs 12 and 13 for her. Tied for third on the team behind Bayer, or fit fourth, sorry, Prasnak, Bayer, and Urban. I think we're going to get a change here. We'll step aside briefly, seven runs, 
so far today for McComb. They lead it 75 after the Katie Thomas two-run homer. Sidney Urban comes to the plate next with a little bit of a defensive change out here for Henry Ford. 7-5, bottom three. This is your home for McComb Community College softball. Attention, please. Now, pitching for the Hawks is number two, Josie Nehoff. And into play, second base is 10, Francesca Reyes. pitcher on the mound right now for Henry Ford it's going to be the second baseman Josie Niehoff making her fourth appearance of the year she's thrown six innings allowed 16 runs off 19 hits only struck out two or three and walked two a lot of balls in play here through her sixth innings six innings of work as that pitch misses outside it's one and one to Sidney Urban after the Katie Thomas two run homer Urban waits She's underneath that one, or over top of it. That ball ends underneath, one, two. It's a good pitch from Josie there, sinking down low on the outer half. Urban leaves that one, two and two. Great response from McComb after giving up four runs and the lead in the third. It's a lot of really nice swings on the Henry Ford side. It's gonna be a very competitive and high scoring game too. 3-2 to two is your final in game one. 7-5 to five is your current score in the third inning of game two. two. Three balls and two strikes. Urban holds that bat in close, and she's going to draw a walk. First batter that Josie Niehoff faces. She walks on a full count, and it'll bring up Casey Stang. Katie, Casey Stang. It's already been a three-run inning. Looking for more right now with Urban at first. Looks like Spencer Oleski is going to come out to pinch run for Urban. And Artie, Kylie Douglas behind the plate has thrown out two runners on the afternoon. So I don't care who's running over there at first base. You got to know you're getting there for sure because Douglas has a heck of an arm behind the plate and has already cut down a pair of runners. Staying at the plate, she had an RBI single, was thrown out at second base, trying to stretch it to a double. She leaves the first pitch in the dirt. Nice stop from Douglas. Staying moves up from the nine spot to the seven spot here in game two. Remains behind the plate. Big hats off to her, being able to catch both games as well as Douglas right now. Stang to center field. This one's got some carry, it's off the wall. Oleski, she's got a touch second. She's headed to third. Big double there for Casey Stang. She's two for two on the day. That one had a chance to get out of here. It hit the black windscreen at the top of the fence. And good base running from Spencer Oleski over there. Not yeah, sure yeah, if that yeah. was going to get down or not. And she was kind of sitting between first and second base. Once she saw it down, all the way to third. A walk and now a double for the first two batters of Josie Niehoff's outing. Zoe Hunt takes a first pitch strike on the inside corner. And Chloe Canton has grabbed a bat in place of Carolyn Martin. Hunt 
Leaves that one down and in, blocked up by Douglas. It scoots away for a moment, but nowhere to go if you're Spencer Oleski at third. That ball's got to go the opposite direction over towards the Henry Ford dugout. Three extra base hits so far in this inning. There's a ball just inside to Zoe, 2-1. Second and third, one out. Hunt's gonna put one on the ground, fouled on the third baseline. Reyes was there, just rolled a little bit the opposite way. Two and two now to Zoe Hunt. Base hit her first time, was cut down, trying to steal a base, that was last inning. She's gonna pull on the ground at Reyes. Fumbles, throws to first, and Hunt is out. Well done from Jalen Reyes, holding the runner, Aleski at third. Get your attention, please. Pitch hitting for the Monarchs, number two, Chloe Canton. So it's two outs for Chloe Canton. She's pinch, she pinch ran a lot in game one. She is going to be swinging it for the first time today. Bryn Byer had herself an RBI single earlier this inning, and Katie Thomas a two-run homer. Chloe Canton looking to add to that with runners in second and third and a 7-5 lead. Strike called at the knees, 0-1. Canton so far this year, she's 10 for 31 on the season with three doubles. She also has five RBIs. 0-1 is in the dirt. Douglas again keeps it in front. Eighth batter of the inning, Canton looking to have a big one and widen this lead. Chloe Canton, fly ball to left center field. Long run for Goodman. She's not going to get there. Off the wall on one hop. Two runs will come in. Chloe Canton, pinch, hit, two run double. Nine five is your score, Macomb on top. The better. At first Number thought, it looked like it had just a little too much loft underneath it, and that Goodman was going to get there, but she was shaded towards the left field line. It was a long run for Ashley. She was not able to get there. What a swing from Chloe Canton in the nine spot, taking over for Carolyn Martin, and it bring up Savannah Clark. Clark on the ground to first. Foul ball at the last second. Postuma fielded it on the opposite side of the chalk. Fourth extra base hit of this inning was from Canton right there. Here's the 0-2. Strike three on the outside corner. Al Diver goes up with the right hand, and that ends the frame, but not before a big five-run frame from your Monarchs. We go to the fourth. 9-5 is your score after Katie Thomas goes deep for two and Chloe Canton drives in a pair on her pinch hit double. This is your home for Macomb Community College Softball. We'll be right back. Leading off for the Hawks, number 12, Kylie Douglas.
Top of the fourth inning. Fourth inning of work for uh, Frazier on the mound. And a 9-5 lead for the Macomb Monarchs. First pitch is grounded up the middle past the feet of Frazier, and it's a leadoff single for Kylie Douglas. She's been great today behind the plate, has thrown out a couple of runners. Drove in a run in the first. Now she leads things off with a single. The better third team, Bella Lekitsky. One for two day for Bella Lekitsky. Let off last inning with a double. That's where things really started. It was Lekitsky doubling, then Oliver, and then Garcia. All three of them with extra bases. She pops the first pitch out of play. Monarchs looking for a quick inning. Haven't had one all day long. Six or more batters have come to the dish every inning so far today. This one one's on the ground. Thomas flipped to second. Praznak, her toss on to first. Not in time. Clean double play, but could not get the speedy Lakitsky at first. Now batting for the Hawks, 34, Jada Oliver. So one away with Lakitsky at first, Jada Oliver lined one off the left field wall last time. She's going to shoot one back towards her own dugout and foul ground. That double play attempt from McComb, it was clean. The ball was just hit a little too softly at Thomas at second base. If it's hit a little bit harder, they're definitely turning that for two. And that's why it's so rare to see a double play or two. That pitch misses outside one and one. It's tough to see them just because the ball needs to be hit hard enough for them to be able to turn it in time. These base paths, and the, the length of these bases, they're not that far. Swing and a miss from Oliver, makes it 1-2. You really got to be quick when you're turning that double play too, but Prasnak and Thomas, two of the best. One ball, two strengths to Jada Oliver. She's one for two with an RBI. This ball's in the dirt, staying, loses it as she looks behind her with the ball in front and down to second goes Lekitsky. Stang does a really nice job of keeping everything in front right there. I think she sold, sold herself a little bit short, thinking it was behind her when it was right in front. She moves laterally very well. You'll see a pitch in the opposite batter's box. She's able to range over, make a catch, slide, and see right there, able to completely range over into that right-handed, left-handed box and make that catch. Three balls and two strikes to Jada Oliver. Been swinging a hotter bat the last couple of times up. Frazier delivers. Line drive, back up the box into center field. Lakitsky's going to hold up at third, and Oliver's got herself two hits on the day so far in game two. The batter 40, Millie Garcia. Runners on the corners with one out here in the fourth inning. Hawks are not going anywhere. Going to continue to score if they keep swinging like this. Garcia, one for two with an RBI double. First pitch is high, above the eyes for a ball. Oliver might be taken off, you never really know. Stang's got a pretty solid arm, has thrown out a few this year. There's a strike on the inside corner. Good battle from Caitlin Frazier on the mound. Frazier's pitch count is now climbing around 90 at the moment. He's given up five runs on eight hits. She's also struck out four. Here's a ball in the dirt. Oliver down to second with ease. Kind of snuck away from staying for a moment as it bounced off the chest protector. Four run lead right now for McComb. 9-5 is your score. We're in the top of the fourth inning. 
Game two of two from our doubleheader in Warren, Michigan. Ground ball to shortstop. Praznak checks the runner, throws the first. That's the only play for her, and they're going to try to get Oliver as she advances on. Lekitsky scores, and it's now 9-6. to six. RBI ground out for Millie Garcia. Better number two, Josie Neon. So now with two outs, McComb wants to keep it right here. Jada Oliver is 60 feet away. Niehoff is two for two, a double and a single. She is now pitching for the Hawks. Down in the count, 0-1. A couple of really nice swings from her. She led off the second with a double, contributed in last inning with that single. She didn't get to hit in game one, but being two for two here, very impressive as that misses down and outside, 1-1. Thirteen and nine overall on the season for Macomb. They're nine and three in conference. This would be a major win if they're able to pull this one out and get to ten conference wins. This ball's tapped foul on the third base line. We'll do the one-two one more time. Praznak deep in the hole at shortstop in her normal position. And Thomas, same thing at second base. In the dirt, blocked by Stang. Two two to Josie Niehoff. We got time. Twos are wild here in the fourth inning. Runner at third base in Jada Oliver. 9-6, McComb on top. Big swing and a miss. Niehoff goes down for the first time today, and that ends the frame. Oliver is stranded at third, and it's 9-6, McComb on top as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Leading off for the Monarchs, number 22, Ellie Presnack. Welcome back in the bottom of the fourth inning. Josie Niehoff on the mound. And Ellie Presnack sends the first pitch back up the middle in the left center. Raznak attacking the first pitch. She led off the third inning. The Monarchs hit all the way around in that frame, and she's back up. And shoots one Monarchs. up the middle for her now second hit of the game. Brin. So one on with nobody out and a three-run lead. Bryn Beyer, one for two with an RBI. That's a balk. So right there, Niehoff double clutches as she was leaving the mound, and... 110,000% of balk right there. Good job by Al Diver behind the dish, our home plate umpire, to make that call. Fire waits on the 1 0. It's above the shoulders. So it's marked as an illegal pitch, not a balk, and that does not move the runner, Praznak, up to second base. I was wondering with that. Bayer pulls it foul on the left field line. Make it a two and one count to her now. Yeah, 
off on the mound. Rocks back, now goes forward. Byer puts one in the air. Right at third base, Reyes takes one step back and makes the catch, one out. The batter, number 14. Just caught it on the handle a little bit. That's on the barrel, it has a chance to get out there. But as we've talked about time and time again, it's all about a matter of half inches and centimeters where you hit the ball on that barrel. It's gonna tell you what type of swing you're gonna have. There's a strike, or a ball, excuse me, on the lower outer half. Carly Bilpo's one for two with an RBI and a run scored. Did her damage back in the first inning. Monarchs were able to score three there and then five. I checked that they scored four in the first and then five in the third. Bilpo hanging out with a 2-0 count. She's gonna cut through that one, big swing. Even though she missed on the 2-0 there, I'd still like to see her take a very aggressive hack with no strikes. Krasnax at first, she singled on the first pitch of the inning. Now Bilpo leaves that one up and in, little change piece from Niehoff, makes it 3-1. Good hitters count for Carly Bilpo. Swings just over top of that one, that one bounced up. Another full count. This is the first one Josie Niehoff will see. And there's a strike on the outside corner. Bill Poe caught looking for out number two. The batter, number 21, Katie Thomas. And just based on how this game has been going and our home plate umpire here, that's a pitch you gotta swing at. Here's a back pick to first base. There's a strike called to Katie Thomas. Two for two day for Katie. A two run blast last inning and a base hit and a run scored in the first. But back to my original point, you have to uh, adjust to what you're seeing behind the dish. Not every umpire is gonna be completely the same. One hop to third base. Reyes makes a nice forehand play and guns to first to end the inning. Nine six is still your score. We go to the fifth. This is your home for Macomb Community College Athletics. It's tearing up my heart when I'm with you But when we are apart, I feel it too And no matter what I do, I feel the same With or Leading out for the Hawks, 44, Caitlin Postuma. Back here in the top of the fifth inning, Caitlin Frazier and her defense back on. Leading by three, nine, hit, uh, nine runs on 12 hits with three errors for McComb. Six runs on eight hits with one error for Henry Ford. They're trying to pick up a, a, a much needed win. They were able to split against Schoolcraft for just their second conference victory and second overall in the year. And they dropped a very close one to McComb in game one. Postuma on the ground, up the middle. Forehand play for Praznak, and she got her by multiple steps. Allie Praznak hopping out of her position there to pick that up. One up, one down. So Cam Krizemin, she will get a pinch hit situation for Jalen Reyes. Reyes' day is done after going 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk.
for Zemin. Puts the first pitch off the pole here. Foul ball, 0-1. Completely different game than our first one today. As there's been 15 runs scored compared to just five in game two. It's 0-2 now to Krizemin. Monarchs led it 4-0 in the first inning, then 4-1 after Henry Ford got one back. Then four runs in the third. From the Hawks, gave them a 5-4 lead. Here's a ground ball to second base, Thomas. Easy quick flip on to first after making a clean play. And that's a pair of ground outs up the middle the for the first two outs. Man. Both Pransnack and Thomas getting busy up the middle now. After Henry Ford took a 5-4 lead in the top of the third, McComb quickly responded with five runs of their own in the bottom half of the third inning. Henry Ford is able to grab one more in the fourth, and that's kind of where we stand right now. It was a 9-6 ball game at the moment. 0-1, Ashley Goodman. She's popped out to third base both times. And she might do it again! This one's more of a line out, but either way, all three outs recorded on Goodman have been by Bryn Beyer. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning, still a 9-6 a lead for your Macomb Monarchs. You're watching Macomb Community College Softball here from the Macomb Athletic Network. Three run lead for McCone. They're looking for a few more. They're going to start off with their number one hitter, Sydney Urban, facing Josie Niehoff. Jalen Reyes has checked back in. She re enters for Cam Krizemin. She's back at third base. First pitch to Urban is outside for a ball. Two run single in the first, walked and scored in the third. Here's a high pop up. Going to stay on the infield this time. Lakitsky is able to eye that down and make a catch. One up, one down in the bottom of the fifth. Casey Stang, heck of a day at the plate. She has been moved from the nine spot to the seven spot, and that has felt like it's done her a favor here. Two for two, an RBI and a double. She takes the first pitch on the outside corner. one misses inside little off speed from Niehoff there Stang's done a nice job behind the plate all year long contributing with the bat here in this one she rips one fouled on the third baseline just foul saw her talking with head coach Jim Beard coming off a couple innings ago she looks to be just fine she was grabbing at her left knee a little bit but has stayed in the game behind the plate and continues to swing it very well. Very strong swing right there. I like to straighten that one out. It's one, two, line drive into left field. Casey Stang is hot right now at the dish. Three straight hits and we have a runner on with one out here in the fifth. Now batting for the Monarchs. That's a lower in her fastball that she just drills. And she's gone both ways today. Up the middle, left side, and over to right center field with her double. Zoe Hunt is one for two. She's going to take a breaking ball and pop it up out of play. Third 
13 total hits now for McComb in this one. That pitch misses down and away. Hunt as well has really started to come on offensively in these last couple of games. No better time than as you really get into those gritty conference games against some of those better teams. Two balls and one strike now to Zoe. She's going to take another off-speed pitch a little bit high above the shoulders. Hitters count for the Monarchs left fielder. She's been there all season long. She'll take a strike on the outside corner now. Josie Niehoff on the on the in the pitcher circle has worked into a full count now with one out and a runner aboard. Three-two pitch, high fly ball to center field, not deep. Coming in is Garcia, puts that in her back pocket for out number two. Credit to Josie Niehoff on the mound. She was able to battle. It's a 3-1 count on Hunt, and she comes back with a strike on the outside corner and forces a lazy fly out to center. Chloe Canton, she doubled to score two runs in a pinch hit sitch. She'll take a ball, 1-0. Oh. It's a nice swing from Chloe. She put in the left center gap to score a few runs. That was towards the end of that third inning where they scored five runs. She's going to pull one on the ground to Reyes now. Clean play on to first, and that's going to end the inning. Canton grounds out to end the fifth. Monarchs back in the top of the sixth inning. They lead 9-6. to six. This is your home for Macomb Community College Softball. Leading off for the Hawks is number three, Ellen Oak. Top of the lineup here in the sixth inning for the Henry Ford College Hawks. Ellen Oak, she's 0 for 3. A couple of strikeouts reached on an error. She squares the bunt there. Ball outside from Caitlin Frazier working into her sixth inning. Noak leaves that one down and away. I want to continue to pitch to contact right here in these later innings. I know we saw a ton of offense from Henry Ford in this second game. It's Lakitsky, Oliver, and Garcia. Those were really the main issues. Noak leaves that fun a little bit foul, two and one. Noak's going to put one in the air. Shallow left field going back as Praznak as she almost collides with Hunt, but a little bit of communication there stops that. The nice play from Allie as she was scaling Tyler back Douglas. into left field. One gone. One for three day for Kylie Douglas. Scored a run on an error back in the first inning. There's a strike on the lower outer corner. Good frame from Casey Stang to bring that all the way back in. Same spot, this one's on the ground. Forehand play for Bill Poe, and she's able to track it down and get back to first. Touches on for two outs. 
always like to see your first baseman being a little bit active, number 13, Bello, uh, going 15. left to right. Sometimes you get certain first basemen that don't love to get out of position and make a play like that because they're uh, in fear of not getting back to the bag in time. There, Bill Poe was, was easy in getting back to that one. Here's a ground ball, f f right side, and it's going to get under the glove of Thomas. Bella Lakitsky having herself a day, second hit. The batter 34, Jada Oliver. Two for three day for Jada Oliver. Henry Ford trailing by three, it's nine to six. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Strike called on the outside corner. In and out of the glove of staying behind the plate. Oliver scored back in the third inning. She was part of that triple, uh, three double situation to start off. There's a little foul. 0-2 now. It was Lakitsky, Oliver, and Garcia that just rattled off three doubles in a row to score a few. It was a little bit of a wake-up call for McComb as well. They trailed 5-4 to four going into the bottom of the third, and they quickly woke back up and scored five. Here's the 0-2. Just a bit outside. Surprised Oliver took that one right there. That was very close. Frazier looking for another strikeout. He's got five on the day total. Oliver floats it out to right field. Thomas goes back and makes the catch on the lip of the grass. Heck of some plays by the shortstop and second baseman of McComb as they have to range back into the outfield. 9-6, we head to the bottom of the sixth. McComb on top trying to sweep a double header here at home against Henry Ford. Six for the Monarchs. Number eight, Savannah Clark. Bottom of the sixth inning. McComb, Monarchs looking for a few insurance runs here as Savannah Clark leads it off in her leadoff position. Sporting a fleece McComb softball zip up right now is, I didn't think it was getting that cold, but I think the wind might have picked up a little bit. They're going to check the swing of Clark there. She did not go. It's 1-0. Josie Niehoff back on the mound for the Hawks. Chopper back to Niehoff on the mound. Quick toss to first. Clark was down that line in a hurry, but it's a bang-bang play, and she's out. Niehoff fielding well inside that pitcher's circle. He plays a really nice second base and then moves over to pitcher in, uh, I guess, in for Jess Hazel, who started this one. It's Allie Prasnak's turn. Heck of a day for Allie, and now she shoots one in the left center gap. Not much you can do if you're Bella Lakitsky there besides get in front of it like a hockey goalie, and I don't even know if I would have done that with how hard that came off the bat. Nice swing from Allie, and that's her third of the day. The batter, number 24, Bryn Fire. Praznak just continues to hammer that left side. She's gone to the left of Lakitsky and now to the right side. Bryn Byer, one for three day with an RBI. Leaves the first pitch in the dirt. Strike out and a pop out along with a base hit RBI and a run scored in the third. Krasnack with a one-out single, and now Byer sends one out to left field. Going back is Goodman. It's off the tip of her glove. Onto the warning track, and Prasnak's going to hold up at third. It's a double for Bryn Byer. 
They swing from Bryn a little bit more, and that's out of here. Ashley Goodman, she's had a tough day today just based on how many balls have gone out there to her. She's made the routine plays, but everything else has been shots over her head, line drives in the gap, ground balls that sneak by her to the wall. Just getting peppered out there by these hitters. 1-0 start to Carly Bilpo. One for three. RBI and a run scored in the first inning. She's got Prasnak down at third base, Byers at second, one out. Make that 2-0 now on Bilpo. Monarchs looking for their 10th conference win of the year. They're three outs away from it. Looking for some insurance. Strike called, middle outer corner. Comb will be back in action later this week on Friday. Here's a line drive, base hit up the middle in the center field. Prasnak scores. Down to third is Bayer. 10-6, Monarchs. Now batting for the Monarchs. Bilpo didn't do too much with it. Very compact, short swing right back up the box. That's gonna do it. Every single time, some right back up the middle there. Don't have to hit it all that hard. She muscles it out there. Katie Thomas now, two for three, a big two-run shot back in the third. She started out 1-0 right now from Josie Niehoff. Runners on the corners with one out. It's 10-6 to six on 16 hits right now for McComb. Thomas pulls it foul on the third baseline, evens it up at 1-1. Katie was the player of the week in the MCCAA East last week, hitting 786, six doubles, and 11 for 14 at the plate. She's showing why she was given that award as she's got a couple of RBIs and a home run today. That ball's in the dirt. Bill Poe hangs out at first base, could have possibly gone, but Douglas has much too good of an arm behind the plate. Thomas awaits a 2-2 pitch. One out and a run scored in the inning. That's low, full count now. Thomas, line drive in the left field, the base hit. Byers gonna score. It's now 11 to six. And with Sidney Urban coming to the plate. This game could end right here and now. If Urban. Now for the Monarchs, double zero, Sydney Urban. She's already got one today. Katie Thomas, who just lined one for a single, she's got one as well. Urban had her homer back in the first game, and that was a very much needed bomb, considering they won it just three to two. And boy, would it be a big one here. That ball's in the dirt. Gonna get away from Douglas. Both runners will move up into scoring position. Bilpo down to third and Thomas is in at second. Urban with a 1-1 count. In this game, she's one for two with two RBIs and a walk. Has scored twice. Gonna put this back on the ground right in front of Douglas inside the left-handed box. One and two to Sydney. Base hit will score two. Urban pops it up. Right at shortstop, Lakitsky makes the catch. Two outs. The batter, number 35, Casey Stang. And here's the hottest hitter in this lineup in this game alone in Casey Stang. She's three for three, a double RBI and a pair of singles. She's gonna pop it up in the air. Long run for the center fielder, Garcia. Having to come over and make the catch is Lakitsky. What a play from Bella Lakitsky at shortstop for Henry Ford. And that saves a couple of runs. We go to the top of the seventh inning. 11-6 lead after Bilpo and Thomas add to it. 
You're watching Macomb Community College Softball here from the Macomb Athletic Network. Leading off for the Hawks is 40, Millie Garcia. Top of the seventh inning and last chance for the Henry Ford College Hawks. They trail 11 to six here in game two. McComb was able to take care of business in game one with a walk-off victory thanks to Ellie Prasnak. They lead by five after trailing in the middle innings of this one. McComb really just woke up after allowing four in the third. They scored five of their own to retake the lead and control it. And they've added a couple more. 11 runs on 17 hits for them. Millie Garcia puts one in the air. Foul territory right side. Bill Post scales back and she makes the catch. One out here in the seventh inning. Kaitlin Frazier has really settled in after her third inning where she gave up four straight hits. Since then, she's only allowed two. Eight, Kaitlin Kyle. And those are the only base runners. Check that, three with Jada Oliver as well. Kaylee Kyles will get herself a pinch hit AB in place of Josie Niehoff. Kyles is a freshman out of East Point, Michigan. Went to Harper Woods High School. She'll take a first pitch ball high and outside. McComb trying to get win number 10 in conference play right here. Be big when we go to Kersley Park on Friday to face Mott. Going to be on the call for that one. Two of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, the MCCAA. Two balls, no strikes to Kaylee Kyles. She'll take a strike inside corner. Kaylin Frazier has gone the distance so far, six and a third innings pitched. Just that one hiccup of an inning. She's got five strikeouts, just one walk, has allowed nine hits on six, run, or six runs on nine hits. Kyle's in a 3-1 now. Swing and a miss, two strikes. Full count with one out to Kaylee Kyles. In the dirt, ball four. So this should bring up Caitlin Postuma, but Jalen Reyes is coming to the dish right now. Kyle's walks, and it seems that Henry Ford has hit out of order. We will not be 100% sure about that right now, but clarification is coming. Millie Garcia popped out to start the inning. Kaylee Kyle's pinch hit for Josie Niehoff. The next batter in the lineup should be Kaitlin Postuma, but right now it's Jalen Reyes. Oh, wait, she, she sorry, she ch uh, was checked back in for Kaitlin Postuma in that seven spot. So she switched from the eighth spot to the seventh spot. There's a ball high. Runner at second base in Kaylee Kyles now. 
So it looks like Reyes has bumped from the eight spot to the seven spot when Cam Krizemin came in the game. This ball's on the ground to third base. Bayer, tough play, it's off her glove. Got to get back and cover third. Nowhere to go for Kaylee Kyles down at second base, and it's now two on with one out for Henry Ford. Error on Bayer, second of the game down there at third base. And now here's the conversation between Jim Beard and Al Diver. So we, we made that, we figured that out here, and now Diver's going to go have a conversation with Henry Ford and their substitutions. We're going to step aside briefly as they unpack this. I think we might have been right. We'll figure it out in just a moment. 11-6 is your score in the top of the seventh inning with one out, McComb on top. So to come back, we were correct. There is now two outs, and Jalen Reyes is due back up because that was her position to hit in. Henry Ford hits out of order, and now there's two outs with a runner at second base. Not sure how to mark that in my scorebook. We'll have to figure that out after the game, but hitting out of order for out number two. Reyes is going to sky one in the air to right field. This one's got a chance to get out. Going back and not making the catch as Chloe Canton. It's off the wall. One run will score in Kaylee Kyles. And Jalen Reyes bats twice in back-to-back at-bats. And she doubles to bring in a run. The better, 21. So I guess when you get two tries at it, one of those has to be a ball in the gap right there. Reyes grounded out to third in her non-at-bat. She was hitting in place of someone else out of order, and now she doubles to bring in a run. It's now 11-7. to seven. Shout out to our entire crew up here, SID Tim Johnson on the stat sheet, PA, and our entire stream. Also controlling the scoreboard out there, Athletic Director Brian Rizzo. That ball's left a little bit high to Ashley Goodman. This is the last chance here for Henry Ford. They're down to their final out with the runner at second base, trailing by four. Goodman's 0 for 3. She has popped out to the third baseman buyer all three times today. High pop up. This should do it. Calling forward is Thomas. She makes the catch, ranging into center field. And McComb sweeps the double header here at home. Something they needed very badly. Their last two, check that, their last three series, they split. And they get two big W's here at home against the Hawks of Henry Ford. Your final score here in game two is 11 to seven. McComb gets it done. The win goes to Caitlin Frazier. The loss will go to Josie Niehoff. Player of the game, Katie Thomas. She was two, three for four with a two-run blast in the third inning, and that's kind of where the, the, the tides turn. You saw Henry Ford take a 5-4 lead in that top of the third inning, and it was a very quick response from McComb in the bottom half. Byer had herself an RBI, Bill Poe with a couple, uh, Thomas with the big blast, Irvin had herself a two-run swing, and uh, Chloe Canton as well. Canton was incredible. Pinch hit, two-run double. So everybody helped out today in game two as we talked about the offensive explosion that was needed for the Monarchs. They got it. Head coach Jim Beard and his staff can go home happy today with a big sweep. Falling to 2-17 and 17 on the year and 2-12 and 12 in conference player, the Henry Ford Hawks. 14-9 and nine overall and 10 and 3 in the MCCAA East are your Macomb Monarchs. Next time, Macomb will be in action. We will be on the call. Kersley Park at Mott Community College 
That's a huge doubleheader with the top two teams in the division. I want to thank everybody today. Athletic Director Brian Rizzo, SID, doing everything out here as well, managing the streams, the stat sheet, and also the PA, Tim Johnston. This is Tom Cavanaugh saying so long. We'll be back for more Macomb Sports tomorrow, weather permitting. Hopefully we're able to get in a pair of games for Macomb Baseball. But softball, we will be back Friday, April 12th at 3 p.m. taking on Mock Community College once again. Your final two scores from today, 3-2 Ali Praznak with a walk-off winner in game one and game two, 11-7. Offensive explosion from your Macomb Monarchs may sweep the doubleheader. Until next time, have a great day, everyone. We'll see you later.